Good evening. Um, welcome to the Woking and Borough Council's Planning Committee and on Valentine's evening. So a few points before we actually commence the agenda. We have a PA system, mobile phones should be switched off or on silent and no fire drill is planned. The proceedings are filmed and will be available on the Woking Borough website. You will see from the current position that the committee members, council officers and registered speakers will normally be recorded. But speakers may ask not to be filmed and their comments will be audio recorded. The planning committee is made up of nine elected members, seven of which are here tonight. And I'll just ask them to introduce themselves on one by one. I'll start with Councillor Ross. Councillor Angus Ross, representing Woking Without Ward. Michelle Shepherd today representing Winch. Malcolm Richards representing Norwich Ward in Woking Town here. John Kaiser representing Barkham and the Vice Chair. Uh, Tim Holden from Hawkland in Lower Early and Chair of the Meeting. Bill Sowley representing London in Woodley. Philip Horseth representing Winch. So you can see we have a good cross section of uh, wards being represented. Planning officers, oh, we are supported and advised by a variety of professional council officers. Now I'll ask those to introduce themselves, starting with my far right. I'm Maggie Shepherd, I'm Clark to be here. I'm Mary Severin, I'm just for advising the planning committee tonight. Connor Brogan, service manager for the strategic development sites. Uh, Chris Easton, service manager for Harvest Delivery. Right, thank you. The planning officers presenting tonight's applications are sat on the side and I will introduce them at the appropriate time. The procedure, this is a quasi-judicial committee with formal set procedures and conduct. Firstly, the planning officer will present each application. Then I will call in turn only those who are pre-registered to speak. Please come forward to the table. The microphone is controlled by the grey button on the base. The time limit of three minutes for each category of speaker will be strictly enforced. So please ensure you get your key points across within your allotted time. <coughs> Members of the committee are interested in the quality of what you have to say, not for how long you speak. So I emphasize that only those who are pre-registered to speak may do so. No others, including town or parish councillors, agents, applicants, objectors or supporters are permitted to address the committee, ask questions or interrupt the meeting. Following the planning officer's presentation and comments of registered speakers, the planning committee members will consider, question and seek clarification for the application and hopefully reach a decision which may or may not agree with the planning officer's recommendation. Finally, a reminder. The local planning authority's role is to determine any valid planning application using local and national planning policy. Our role is not to suggest alterations to schemes, whether they are a good idea or indeed needed, whether they are too costly or whether they are alternative uses. Thank you very much and I'll now proceed on to tonight's agenda. Right. And apologies for the meeting. There we have two, it's Councillor Wayne Smith and Councillor John Jones. And then on to the minutes. Are there any alterations to the minutes? No? I just have a show of hands then that it was an accurate um, representation of the meeting? Yes, yes. Oh, that's okay. Okay, thank you. Right. Next item then is application or oh, declarations of interest. Anyone wish to declare any interest on any? No? Okay. Then we have applications to be deferred or withdrawn. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, item at PG1, uh, Lodge North Court, be withdrawn. So hopefully there's no one here for that application because it will not be um, heard tonight. Um, you see we are having a little technical problem to my left with the PC, but I will go on for a little while. It is agenda item 76 on page 9. It's the land at Matthew Green's Farm Wokenham. It's a reserved matters application for a new com community primary and nursery school. It's 
before the committee if it's a major application and the applicant is Wokingham Borough Council. The application was deferred from December meeting in order to review the shortfall in soft play ex um, external net area. Um, I would say to speakers and members, if we could focus on the details of that part rather than going over what we've already discussed, because we did spend quite a lot of time two months ago discussing that application. Um, the case officer will be Alex to wait for it, and we will do it just as soon as the PC is working. This is, the, this is an application for reserve matters for the erection of new community, primary and nursery school building with access of roads 24, parking and landscaping, including provision of playing fields and hardcore, <coughs> hardcore play area. The principal development was established through the granting of the Outline Planning Commission in April two, 2015. And just to recap, the application was for the full planning committee uh, in December with a recommendation for approval subject to conditions. However, this was deferred by reason of the shortfall in the external net area for a 2 4 entry school. The above slide shows uh, the location of the site as uh, indicated within the outline master plan for Matthew Greenburn. Again, as a recap, the slide shows the proposed layout of the scheme for a one four entry provision on site. Uh, which, as confirmed in the December committee, is fully compliant with WBC standards and BB10103 size guidelines in respect of the external P area. Again, nothing new on this slide from the previous committee, uh, but this slide shows uh, that should a two form entry provision be required in the future, an extension can be added to the east elevation, uh, which would meet the internal guidelines for a two-form entry provision. However, of course, externally, should the school expand to a two-form entry provision, there would be a shortfall in the net external area, specifically in relation to the guidelines for areas related to soft outdoor PE. The application was therefore deferred, as we said earlier, by reason of this shortfall, in order for further discussions to take place between education and planning in terms of how this could be addressed. The proposal has been reviewed by the applicant and the solution proposed in order to address this shortfall is to install an all-weather pitch should the school expand to two form entry in the future. Under the guidelines, the overall size of the all-weather all pitch is permitted to be counted twice for the purpose of meeting the minimum recommended guidelines. This is because an all-weather facility uh, will have many more hours of use in the standard grass pitch and obviously be used uh, through different seasons as well. Therefore, the installation of such a pitch on the site would mean the external net area would now be compliant with uh, the BD13 guidelines. Additionally, a gate can also be installed in the perimeter fencing to the north to facilitate access into the streamside park, which will serve as further open space. Details of this gate will be secured through the outline condition and submissions uh, relating to boundary treatments. This second slide uh, indicates a possible alternative location for the all-weather pitch that's shown in blue on the slide. Uh, but again, this, this can all be, all be controlled by the, con the new condition proposed on the permission. So next, just a few slides to recap uh, on the original proposal as seen in December. Uh, they include two elevations and two floor bands. So this is the first elevation, uh, the northwest view, the difference in the ground floor for one floor entry and two floor entry, and again for the first floor. Uh, so therefore the application uh, has been recommended for approval as before, um, subject to a new condition which would re require the installation of an all-weather pitch in the event that the school expands. The details of which would be required to be submitted to and approved in writing by the council. So just to quickly go through the members' updates, uh, there is a, it's quite a small update, there is an update on the condition uh, to secure that the size of the pitch is correct, as well as two additional comments stating that the school will be delivered with the community facilities in tandem, and also 
uh, a note to confirm the school will include the sprinkler system. Thank you, Chair. Okay, we have one speaker pre registered, which is Piers Bunning from Woking and Borough Council. Good evening to you. <coughs> Good evening, Chair, members of the committee. Um, as you'll be aware, this application came to this committee um, before Christmas when it was deferred because members were concerned about the adequacy of the outdoor play and sports areas if the school is built or expanded to two forms of entry or 420 places. Uh, members will recall these areas fell short of the non-statutory space guidance set out by the Department for Education. Members are right, of course, to be concerned that working in schools have the facilities our children need to thrive including space, perform sports and recreation. We have listened to those concerns and improved our plans. To meet the national guidance, we'll provide a larger weather surface in place of one of the two grass pitches as part of the works required to grow the school to 420 places. Grass is a very versatile surface, but it isn't resilient and can quickly turn to mud if overused. Conversely, the national guidance says the area of all weather pitches can be counted twice for the purposes of these guidelines as they can be used for, significant, uh, for significantly more than the seven hours a week assumed of grass pitches. This is the approach, in fact, we have followed on a number of primary school expansion projects <coughs> approved by this committee. The design of the pitch is yet to be determined as this will reflect the Council's assessment of the needs of the local community at the point the construction decision <coughs> is taken. The pitch could be a simple facility designed to meet the curriculum, social and informal play needs of a primary school, or, subject to further planning consent, a higher specification pitch designed to meet the needs of the wider community. And expansion here would also mean that the community parents and wider community benefit from the large uh, community car park, which is supported by the school's travel plan and development site-wide foot and development site wide footpath network would mean there will be no school run parking problems expected here. So in conclusion, having the option to provide a second form of entry gives the council greater certainty that needs that might be generated uh, by other nearby development sites or a surge in the birth rate can be met without needing to resort to temporary accommodation or bulge classes on current school sites. This expansion may never be required but being able to deliver capacity if it is needed is a prudent step to ensure the council can meet its duties to the people of Woking. Thank you. Can you just do your department then. Thank you, my members. Michelle, and then Angus. Two comments. One, I'd like to make sure that they do actually allow the local residents to be able to use the playing field um, at appropriate times when the school is not in session and because I think there's a lack of enough play space for active games and things like this in the area. That's the major thing we're raising out. Thank you. Michelle, that's, uh, that's fine. I mean, that, that'll be under the management agreement that we do is whoever the operator is going to be. So the mention about <coughs> money uh, changing hands with that, they, they might try to think. They might charge us for that, and I think that's ridiculous since we've paid for the uh, school. Yeah. Uh, Angus? Thank you, Chairman. Just to say, uh, I think this is a good solution from where we were from the last time this was discussed. <coughs> uh, and in fact, in some ways, an improvement um, should the school get expanded. The other point I'd just like to note that we have noted that the sprinkler system will be fitted, although it's not a planning consideration. I think it's very good that it is publicly noted. Malcolm? Likewise, I quite, <coughs> I quite like the fact that they've addressed our concerns from the previous time, both in terms of the grass space and the parking. Uh, and it's always welcome to have a, a school, a nice modern school in the area to cope with the things going on. Michelle? It's nice to know that they are going to have a sprinkler system, unlike the other building that oh, was built just in Emperor. Michelle. Yeah. Can I just ask, the surface of the all-weather pitch, there's been some concern in the past that some of the materials that have been used on these all-weather pitches have concerns over uh, use of rubber pellets. Do you know what the surface is likely to be on this? Uh, well, it's, it's controlled under conditions, so when we come back to, to do that, we'll have a look at what the surfaces, I mean, 
most pitches now are what they do with those the rural pellets in them, but I think the modern 4G pitches, I think they're called, yeah. don't have them as much as the more on grass, but it's controlled by condition. Okay. Thank you. Members, any more questions? I'm going to say to, to the residents that are here tonight, we did debate this application at length two months ago, so it may seem that we're doing it very quickly tonight, but so we have thoroughly looked into it. Okay, so we'll go to the vote then. The recommendation is for approval. It's out on page 11. There are the conditions and the informatives and the alteration to, or the amended uh, condition 9 in the members' update. So all those in favour, please show approval. So that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item then is agenda item 77 on page 47. It's then <coughs> land at Mackenzie Greens Farm. It's a re reserved matters application for 244 dwellings, community spaces, access, garages, parking, internal roads, pathways, drainage, and landscaping. And it's before the committee as it's a major application. And the committee did go on site visit back in 2015, which I personally did go on, and several other members did as well. Case officer, once again, Alex Lane. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll, come on to, I'll come on to why a bit later. However, this application is uh, for reserve matters for the erection of 243 residential dwellings, not 244. Um, it was a last minute change. Um, associate, associated means amenity space, access, garages, parking, internal roads, pathways, drainage, and associated landscaping. The principle of development for approximately 760 dwellings on Matthew, Matthew's Green Farm site was established through the Grant of Outline Planning Commission in April 2015. This is the reserve matters application for phase four of the development, which is the largest of phases, phases and it's located on the southern side of the NDR. The southwestern boundary runs alongside the uh, public right of way, which separates the phase from phase one area. To date, Reserve matter approvals on Matthew Street development have granted 329 units across Phase 1, uh, Phase 2A, 2B and 3. The section of NDR through the Matthew Street site has also received our approval and is under construction. So again, this application seeks reserve matters approval for design, appearance, layout and landscaping for 243 dwellings, including 75 units of affordable housing. The proposal would result in a density between 27 and 30 dwellings per hectare. The phases are split into three character areas, with the applicant, uh, which the applicant has termed the contemporary slash NDR character area, the rural edge area, and the phase one extension area. The NDR contemporary character area is located along the north edge of the site, where, the, where it fronts onto the NDR and extends up to the northeast corner of the site where it addresses the new type of road ground map. The design of the dwellings in this area is reflective of the designs of the houses within phase 2A previously approved. The dwellings within the rural edge, rural edge section located to the south will incorporate more traditional mix of materials and finishes, finishes such as <coughs> hanging tiles, red bricks and occasional use of render. This section is designed to reflect and be compatible with the existing characters, character of the properties and facility. The phase one extension area is the largest of the three areas, and the design of the dwellings in this area will reflect those of phase one, incorporating red brick, occasional time, and some render. This slide shows examples of the proposed street, sh street scene within each of the three character areas, demonstrating that while there are some variations in the proposed units, there will also, be, there will also clearly be some similarities with the proposed designs across the three phases of development that will link them all together. During the submission of the application, officers will work with the applicant to revise the scheme, uh, in particular the revision of some of the apartment blocks. Uh, officers were concerned with dark bricks and the original design being a little bit upkeep in the area. However, these have now been revised and they now successfully integrate uh, with the rest of the, de the development in Matthews, Matthews Green. I touched on it earlier, but one apartment has been removed uh, from the scheme in order to secure a better connection to the car park. 
uh, for larger vehicles as the apartment situated above the entrance and technically it was better off removed. The overall proposed layout ensures accordance with uh, WBC separation distances uh, and when there are very minor infringements these have been identified with, within the report and in respect to some garden deaths these are not considered to be significantly harmful due to the low number. The proposed layout would provide density between, between 27 and 30 grams per hectare and the proposed dwelling mix is considered acceptable and again in accordance with WBC standards. The parking provision also accords with WBC parking standards and is distributed appropriately throughout the site. Uh, and the site layout also accommodates a leap play area and, addi and, a, and additionally a more central located open space with an actual play area as you can see on the map. Finally, this, this slide shows the dwelling distribution as, and as you can see with, with the affordable housing which is shown in grey on this map, uh, spread well across the de development uh, which is in accordance with WBC standards. So in summary, the reserve matters presented here are considered acceptable for the delivery of 243 new dwellings. And this is therefore being recommended for approval subject to the conditions listed in the report. Uh, as well as subject to the signing of the company, accompanying section 106 agreement and members update. Uh, so just to go through the members update, there's a couple of pages on this one, uh, but to give a quick list. Uh, the members update also includes uh, the amendment to the description to change it from 43, uh, 243 to 244. Uh, alt alteration to the recommendation to uh, secure, uh, to refuse the uh, proposal if the section 106 is not agreed, uh, as well as an update, a uh, clarity, sorry, to the heads of terms. Uh, a list of the proposed plans, they take up a couple of pages. Uh, a few additional conditions securing highway plans, such as adoption, parking, services. Uh, an amended parish response making no objection to the proposal. And finally, an updated parking table. Again, just for clarity, that's all uh, within WPC standards. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. All right, we have one speaker registered, and that is John Gately, the agent. Would you like to come forward? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Good evening, councillors. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak in support of this application. On behalf of both his homes, I'd like to say we are pleased with the positive recommendation made by your officers and for the full explanation provided in their reports. We appreciate their considerable efforts bringing this application to committee tonight. Bovis Homes is fully committed to the delivery of Matthews Green Development, which is a key site <coughs> within the North Working and SDL. Granting consent for these phase four proposals will allow Bovis to continue to deliver much needed new homes for the borough, including 74 affordable homes. Work on the Phase 4 parcel would commence this year with construction starting from the area adjoining Phase 1 and then moving in a broadly clockwise direction around the site, forming the play space, followed by the frontage to the new NDR, and then around to meet what will become Phase 5. This will coincide with the expiry of the lease for the existing commercial leases that are currently located in the southern part of the site from around late 2020. There are three main pockets of affordable housing within Phase 4, with the majority of the affordable units being delivered early in the building programme, the first of which will be later this year. The commitment to ongoing engagement remains, and Bogus have worked hard to ensure that it's engaged positively with the local community on this phase. We presented the proposals to residents of the North Working and Community Forum and hold quarterly meetings with the community liaison groups. So I hope that members will agree that the scheme before you today provides a great opportunity for high quality and attractive family housing in a landscape setting which will continue the delivery of the Matthews Green development. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, members, who would like to keep your mouth open? My usual question, I don't have any problem with the layout of the area generally. My usual question, of course, is about the road width. Can I ask, uh, Chris, what do you think the road widths are going to be in this one? And then I've got a question for you there. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I know what they are. They're going to be a minimum of 5.5 on the entry for the first 12 metres and reduce it to 5 metres throughout on the main roads of the site. Uh, that's what it says on page 49. Yep. On page 58, it says the road will be 6 metres uh, from the NDR, which is 5.5 within. So there's a difference between the two. I'd like you to be the larger of the two, so that when you get vehicles going down the road, if it be buses or whatever at the later stage, we don't have a clash. That's a little extra half metre makes quite a difference. Yep. Well, when we come to the technical, I just need to. Um, what section is that on? Section 48, you say? No, 58, page 58 on the top. It says, uh, road will be six metres and five metres wide, respectively, and within the site. Uh, and then the road will radiate. But on page 49, it says, just the entry bit for 12 metres only yeah. will be 5.5. And five. I'd like you to be the larger of those two sizes, because that's the point I always raise. You will, and I, I know you might like the second one, which I think is the type one, which I think is, I believe it's the first one, which is 5.5, and you see it's a 5, which is the standard. So, we have primary and secondary streets, and obviously the secondary streets are on the site for this part. But in reality, we know that quite often with these roads, it, it, we've got large vehicles going down, sorry, we've got large vehicles going down there, uh, 5 metres is literally two widths added together, there, there's no gap between them, so uh, it makes it far more difficult for people on pavements and, and so on. But, so is, it, is there no possibility that we can request a site in one no, in terms of, so obviously we've got Harvest Design Guide, there's also many of the streets which obviously sets out the whips. With following uh, conversations and requests from the members, we obviously widen the roads up to five metres. The standard road width is typically 4.8 metres and working with the developers and on the request of the members, we have obviously been able to widen them up to overcome some of the concerns that you previously had. So it meets our requirements, they've provided the tracking that's necessary for the developments and obviously the main the largest vehicle that would be on the secondary roads would be the refuse vehicle, which is a large vehicle mm. that Wokingham has, and it's been tracked to accommodate that and a, and a, a car passing on bends and on straight sections where, where they are. It would be, be, be one of those plus a bus. There won't be buses inside that part of the site, so you've got the NDR running through the core of the Matthews Green development leading onto the rest of the NDR. That's wide enough to accommodate <coughs> bus with footpath sideways on both sides, and then when you get to secondary roads within the site, they're, they're reduced down. And for valid reason, typically the wider the road, the faster the speeds tend to be. So obviously we try to bring them down through as the street higher up and reduces through the site. Okay, thank you. Michelle? For change, I'd like to agree with him on the amount of parking. I know that would be an unusual fact. <laughs> but it actually follows what I would like to see is at least two spaces for every, for every place. I also like the idea that they actually are delivering the affordable homes as opposed to giving us money and hoping that we'll build a home someplace. This is a positive thing for a change and not just always being negative. And um, hopefully the roads that are now adopted, even though they do have bonds for them, they would actually have enough money to maintain lighting and things like this. Because what can, well, what can be responsible for the lighting uh, for the street lamps uh, since if they're not the roads are owned by Wokingham? We have that problem in a few places in my ward. We do. Where a road will be adopted, the lighting will be taken in as part of that adoption. Where it's not adopted, the lighting will stay within the management company of the site. But phase four, my understanding is the majority of this, in all of it is to be handed over for adoption. John? <coughs> Thank you, Jim. I, I don't have any issues myself. Just a question that uh, is in the pack from Wokingham Town Council. They object to the application as it includes much needed for the homes that can't be delivered for three years because of the land. Is that true? <coughs> uh, it's, not, well, it's not true. No. Um, the, the affordable housing is spread across the site. Um, I think the concern was in the bottom corner of the site is a commercial, uh, commercial uses at the moment. They're uh, moving on uh, in about two years, I think it is. Um, so the, the affordable housing will be provided early on. Thank you. That's all right. And, and now, Angus. <coughs> Just a very quick one, Chairman. Uh, near the top of page 53, comments from outside bodies, Natural England, although they have an objection, asked for the, a clearer uh, route through to the suitable what's that, natural green space. Uh, what's that taken account of? Because it, it's not mentioned further in the report. <coughs> Um, the, the route that they, 
they're talking about. So the, the, the sang in this area is not actually located on site. It's located at the top of what Toki Road, so it's a couple of hundred metres away. Um, at the moment, um, until the NDR is fully open, um, the route is a bit convoluted to get there. The NDR is due to open next month in that section, which will get you to the sand much easier. There's also um, improvements to the existing park, which I can't think of the name of now, um, that also gets you across there easier. So their, their objection was based on how you get to it, but it's, 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 not, it's not really a standing objection. It's always going to be a bit slower as the parcels come along and development comes along. Is yours on that comment? I'm sorry. Is that? No. Then I'll go to Philip first. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I, will, I was concerned about the affordable housing uh, question here. I'm not accused of that. That's really dealt with. Michelle? Um, there's no comment here about whether the subs will be deeded over to Milwaukee Peterborough Council or not, or whether they'll be run by a management company. Uh, most times, mm -hmm. we have, we're having more of them deeded over to us. Uh, with a suitable amount of money to pay for maintenance over time, but they seem to be better in the borough's care than in private communities' care in past experience. Will they? Um, there are, there's a number of sites across this part of sign leading into the same. So the ones that are in the areas to be adopted will be taken, or where the open space will be adopted by the council. And the ones we, not won't be? The ones I don't believe there are in this part. <coughs> I believe everything in this parcel are, are being transferred to the council and will be adopted and appropriate community sums associated with maintenance. Okay, members, any other questions? So I'm just going to raise one point which I brought up at the chairman's briefing on Monday. And I did ask whether on the S106 that we could bring in phasing for the development of so many houses each year to be built. I was told because this is reserved matter, that isn't possible. So if Connor could just sort of respond to that. Yes, yeah, correct. <coughs> um, if you would, it, one, it's very difficult to do anyway, but you would, you would tackle this at the eight-point value of the stations. Stage. This, this reserved matter is just for uh, detailed design, basically, so you can't do it. Okay. Thank you. Right. So that's, that's it from everyone. Okay, we have the recommendation then, which is set out in the members' update. It is in three sections, A, B, and C, and so that is for approval. There are changes for the conditions in the update, and then there's numerous conditions and informatives in the agenda. So all those in favour of approving the application, please show. And that is unanimous. Thank you, members. <coughs> Agenda item 78 on page 75. It's the Eastern Gateway land at Waterloo Road. It's a full application for 420 metres single carriageway road and footways and cycleways. It's before the committee as it's a major application and the applicant is of course Broken and Borough Council. And um, so the committee uh, and local councillors attended a briefing on Monday on this application and it was to enable us to obtain a better understanding of the, the application. <coughs> but tonight, we are here to sort of discuss the planning policy and actually make a decision. I'll hand over to the case officer, and you okay. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application is for what's commonly referred to as the Eastern Gateway, which is the second phase of the Southern Distributor Road, which is ultimately going to be a strategic route between London Road and the Chamfered Road, that we're providing access to the development at South Wokingham. I'm going to just start with a brief uh, summary of the policy background and a little bit about the evolution of the proposal before explaining the detail of it. I think members of the committee are well aware of the Council's spatial strategy for the period up to 2026, including the requirement to deliver 13,000 new homes 
the majority of those being within four strategic development locations. And the reason for concentrating development in this way is to enable development to be comprehensively planned and critically to secure the infrastructure that's needed to support the new communities as part of the development. So the South Working End Strategic Development Location is to be an early extension of around 2,500 new homes and one of the key pieces of infrastructure to be delivered with it is the Southern Distributor Road. The core strategy policy of CP21 establishes that it should be a continuous new route running through the development um, and it should connect from the 329 London <coughs> Road just west of Beach to the 321 Finchancy Road in the vicinity of Tesco and you can see on the framework master plan for the development from the supplementary planning document the rough route of the road and then Appendix 7 of the core strategy and the supplementary planning document for the development provide a lot more detailed guidance on what the nature and function of the road should be. And here is an extract from the appendix to the core strategy, which explains that the road should have three main functions. Part of it is to take from the traffic that currently goes through the town centre, in particular heavy goods vehicles, which will reduce congestion and improve the environment in the town centre. And one of the aspects of that is it will allow environmental improvements um, to support the renaissance of the town centre and that in itself is a policy um, aspiration needed to meet the needs of existing residents and the town growth, the new residents in the North and South Wokingham um, developments as well. The second um, function is to allow for sustainable travel to be a corridor for um, bus transport and pedestrians and cyclists for local journeys within development and connecting into the wider network as well. And the third thing is that it's not just a transport corridor, but also a residential street within the development. Um, if you think much like other roads already in the town, London Road, Finchampton Road, Reading Road, which have development fronting onto the road, um, and that contributes to the quality of character, um, makes it a pleasant place to live, and the surveillance provided by the neighbouring houses um, contributes to it being a safe place to live and encourages walking and cycling. <coughs> Um, as I said, there's more guidance on the um, character of the road in the supplementary planning document. The first section of the road has already been built. Um, it extends from London Road down to the Reading Road railway line, um, being built as part of the development of Montague Park um, under section 106, it's known as William Fuller's Way now. The remainder of the road will be delivered by the council under sealed um, on the broad alignment that's been established by the framework master plan, which you saw a couple of slides back. Um, the route has been refined through a detailed option appraisal that was followed by public consultation back in 2014 when people were asked to express preferences for a northern route, hugging the railway line, the central route, or a southern route along the edge of the development. Um, the preferred option was very much the central route, which was closest to the alignment shown in the framework master plan. And one of the benefits of that is that it's a central route development and it helps support the functions of the road as a corridor for sustainable travel and also as a sort of place making um, function. So in November 2014, the executive resolved to allocate funds to progress the design of the road based on that preferred central route. And then in a further resolution um, in March 2015 to bring forward this Eastern Gateway section earlier as part of the phase delivery of the road. So that brings us then to the current application, which consists of the bridge over the railway line and a short section of road connecting that to Waterloo Road, where there will be a new forearm roundabout tying into the existing road. Once that link is in place, the level crossing can be closed, which is something that Network Rail are very keen to do for safety reasons. And a stopping up order is being progressed in parallel with the planning application, um, but it's a separate procedure, and I'm not going to go into it in any detail here, because I know that the applicant, Jean Maloney, will be covering that in her presentation <coughs> in the minutes. But the critical thing I think for the committee to note about that is that the level crossing can't be closed until the alternative route is open. So 
So the aerial photograph here shows the application site in context. We've got the Montague Park development to the north of the railway line with William Healers Way running down the centre towards the railway. Um, phase 7 of Montague Park, shady yellow there, which actually is a bit more advanced than it's shown there now. And <coughs> the top of Montague Park Primary School, shady blue. On the left of Montague Park was the Clay Lane, which I'll be referring to in a moment, and also down to the south west Britain's farm. So the road will be a continuation of William Healers Way, south over the new railway bridge down to the roundabout junction at Waterloo Road, and then in the short term the traffic will continue south along Waterloo Road and Peacock Lane but as the next phase of the Southern Distributed Road comes forward, it will continue to the west as well, to East Hampstead Road and beyond that to Finch Hampstead Road. But in the short term, um, there will be a spur off the roundabout, providing an alternative access to Britain Farm, because the existing access along the line of the public right of way um, can't be maintained because it would result in a fifth arm on the roundabout, which would complicate the design and operation of it too much. And for the final of uh, the roundabout <coughs> um, and although the, um, the application to stop up Waterloo Road as the master planning for the adjacent plan progresses, it may be that part of that route is retained to provide access to the adjacent housing parcels. So the um, supplementary planning guidance for the South Working Development establishes design parameters for the streets within the development in a hierarchy of streets with different characters and functions. Some of the distributed road being the primary route through and having those three functions as a relief road for sustainable travel and being integral to the development. Um, and the design of William Healers Way being the first phase of it was based on that guide and provides something of a template now for the road as it continues southwards. Um, so what you've got is a single carriageway road with 7.3 metre width sufficient to carry heavy goods vehicles and buses. Um, on either side you've got three metre wide shared way <coughs> and cycle paths. In consultation responses there have been some concerns raised about the use of the shared cycle pathway. <coughs> um, but it's an approach that's already been used at Montague Park and in North Wokingham as well. It's appropriate for the level of pedestrian <coughs> cycle use that's likely to occur. It makes sufficient use of the space, meets all the relevant standards. There's still the option for confident cyclists to cycle on the main carriageway if they wish to. And if it was a problem or circumstances changed in the long run, it would be possible to segregate the, um, the path quite simply as well. Turning to more character related issues, um, the road at Montague Park has um, got the character of a tree lined boulevard with um, structural tree planting along verges and on islands within the road. Um, which have a sort of dual role <coughs> of controlling traffic speeds and um, giving the character a quite a really leafy character, um, which is an important factor because it comes back to one of the fundamentals for the development that it should build on the <coughs> framework of, um, that exists in the area already, making it a pleasant environment for residents, and also because the quality of routes is an important factor in encouraging sustainable travel as well. Um, so the proposed development will continue the pattern that's been established at Montague Park already. Existing trees and hedgerows have been retained as far as possible um, for landscape and ecological reasons. And that includes the retention of the most significant <coughs> trees in the centre of the new roundabout. Um, that is something that's been given very careful consideration from a landscape and highway point of view um, to be satisfied that the tree can be successfully retained and safely with the function of the roundabout, um, which we're satisfied about. I think it would be a really good feature, making it something quite distinctive and locally um, characteristic, given the development of local identity. There's also a significant amount of new landscaping to take place <coughs> to mitigate the impact of the development. Um, although it's currently designed, it's not possible to plant on the embankments on the southern side of the uh, bridge. Um, there is a significant amount of structural landscaping uh, proposed um, adjacent to it and it's also possible as the design is refined there may be scope to get some more planting on the embankment um, but that can be sort of refined through conditions of the application.
once the um, level crossing is closed, um, clearly that will have an impact on people travelling from the Priest Avenue Rancis Lane past the town. Um, for vehicle travel, um, the options will be either to go up to London Road and then either along the um, William Heath Way or by other existing routes. And the other alternative would be to go to East Hampstead Road and then in the short term following existing routes. But in the long term, that will also tie into the Southern Distributor Road um, when the next phase comes forward. And it's acknowledged that there will be a level of inconvenience for people from that area when they want to travel southwards, but that will be offset by a reduction in traffic through those roads um, as that route isn't an, op be an option and the wider benefits of providing the um, distributor road. Clearly, that bigger diversion will be an issue for pedestrians and cyclists. And what is proposed for them, and what you can see here, is a route via Clay Lane through phase seven at Montague Park. So the section of that in phase seven is already available um, and open and usable, um, and there just need to be some upgrades to the park in Clay Lane. The development is one of the projects that's been delivered on behalf of the council by Balfour Beatty under a scape contract. Um, it's expected to start on early on site early in 2019, assuming this application is successful tonight, and then be open by the end of 2021. Um, the application for the remainder of the Southern Distributor Road, so um, from this point westward to the East Road, the Chatham Road, is expected later this year as well. <coughs> One of the concerns that's been expressed about the application is disruption during construction and also cost boundary coordination with Bradmore Forest with it being quite close to the borough boundary. Um, and I just draw members' attention to the condition requiring a construction environmental management plan. And as part of that, there will be a construction traffic management plan, which was something that Bradmore specifically asked for in their consultation response um, and that we would consult them on um, when dealing with the condition. In terms of delivery as well, the land required um, to the north of the railway was secured by the Section 106 agreement for Montague Park. Um, there is the trigger for the, um, the council to call for that land. Um, the transfer process is in hand already. And the land to the south is controlled by Thames Valley Housing and Kia Construction. Um, I think the principle for the transfer of land to allow the road to be delivered has been agreed. And again, that is something that's being progressed at the moment. So the principle of development is entirely consistent with the development plan and the report sets out the planning issues in more detail. Inevitably, with something of this nature, there will be impacts, um, but either these are mitigated or they're outweighed by the benefits of the comprehensive development that South Wokingham. So just subject to a couple of points in the members' update on page seven. Um, this is one correction that we did have a <coughs> consultation response from Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue um, and they had no objections to the application and no additional parking requirements and there have been a couple more consultation responses from the public um, who don't raise any sort of substantive new planning issues that haven't been addressed in the report already which takes me finally to the recommendation for approval subject to conditions as set out in pages 76 to 86 of the agenda. Thank you very much for that very detailed report there. Thank you. You're just doing this uh, We have one uh, registered speaker, which is Jean Malovi, representing Working and Borough Council, the applicant. Well, looking forward. Good evening. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Jim Minovi, President.